you only ever get asked to work out tangents to polar curves that are either vertical or horizontal. So um, either perpendicular to the initial line or parallel to the initial line. Okay. Um, this kind of comes, it's, it's basically a parametric equation. So we're not at looking at it in terms of R now. Um, we're looking at it in terms of x and y and, and theta, because you know for a tangent, the gradient is given by dy by dx in Cartesian coordinates. Um, a way to convert this into polar <coughs> is to use the chain rule. So you've got dy by d theta and d theta by dx. And you can find the gradient at any point by um, dividing those derivatives. So what we'll want to do is, given our polar equation, write it in terms of x and theta and y and theta, which is a bit counterintuitive to what we've been doing in polar curves. But for finding tangents and, and, and sorry, um, tangents horizontally and vertically is what we do. If your tangent is parallel to the initial line, it's got a dy by dx of zero. That's when dy by d theta equals zero. And when it's perpendicular to the initial line, when it's vertical, that's when it's got like infinite gradients when the bottom of this fraction is zero. When it's dx by d theta equals zero. This is what I need you to learn. Okay, so what's in that box there is the important bit. Top bit kind of justifies where it comes from, but that's the important bit to learn. So parallel to the initial line is dy by d theta equals zero. <coughs> Perpendicular to the initial line is dx by d theta equals zero. Okay. So this is what we're gonna how we're gonna do this. Okay. So first off, we've got this example one. So we've got a polar equation with um a polar curve with equation uh, r equals a one plus cos theta. It's a cardioid. Um, and it says find the coordinates where the tangents are parallel to the line theta equals zero. Let's do a sketch of this first. So you can sketch it in your calculator or you can just draw what it looks like if you know it. So this is the cardioid. It looks something like this. Okay. Um, hopefully, uh, obvious tangents to this line are up here at the top. So um, tangents that are parallel to the um, initial line, there's one up there, and there's obviously hopefully one down there. Okay. Not actually sure if there's going to be one here. I don't know what's happening to the gradient uh, um, over here. Um, so there might be one in the middle there. It depends kind of how far it bends in. Okay. So for tangents that are parallel to the initial line, or line theta equals zero, I know that dy by d theta equals zero. So parallel to the initial line is dy by d theta equals zero, the top of that fraction. From right back at the start of the pack, we know that y is equal to r sine theta. A definition that is worth learning is so the opposite side of that little right angle triangle, so y is r sine theta. To be able to differentiate y, I need it all in terms of theta. So it's in terms of r and theta at the moment. So what I do is I take my polar curve and just swap it in for r in there. Okay. So my expression for y is uh, a1 plus cos theta sine theta. Okay, and this is what you're always going to do. You're going to start off with y or x equals r sine theta or r cos theta. So we pull the curve in, and then it's a case of differentiating this thing. Um, you can uh, either expand this out, or you can just use the product rule on it as it is. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to use the product rule on this to get dy by d theta. So I'm going to leave the a out the front. This is just a constant time for everything. Product rule says to differentiate the first one. If I differentiate cos, I get minus sine theta. And if I differentiate one, it disappears. Uh, times by a second, so you get times sine theta. Then I differentiate the second one, so differentiating sine goes to cos, and I times by the first function, which gives me this. I can simplify it slightly. Uh, so I get minus sine squared theta plus cos theta plus cos squared theta. And I'm solving when this is equal to zero. Okay. 
if this is equal to zero, the bracket is equal to zero, I need that all to be in terms of the same trig functions for me to be able to solve it. So I'm going to turn sine squared into one minus cos squared. So I'm going to use cos squared plus sine squared equals one. Minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta minus one. Putting it kind of the other way around. So I have to stick that in. I get a cos squared plus cos squared gives me two cos squared theta plus cos theta minus one. It's this bit that I'm solving equal to zero. Um, so you can solve it on your calculator. In fact, try that. You get two solutions. You get cos theta is a half, or cos theta equals minus one. Cos theta equals a half. You solve that. So we'll do this in radians. Um, you get pi over three for your initial solution. Depends if we're going between 0 and 2 pi or um, pi and minus pi. I'll do pi and minus pi. It doesn't specify in the question, so I think you will be fine. And I also get from this one, cos is minus 1 at the bottom, so that's at pi. So um, having a look at this, these two that I've drawn on in blue here, that one's at pi over 3. This one down here, this one's at minus pi over three. And there is also one at the origin, which is harder to tell whether there is one or not, which happens when your curve goes around and gets to pi in there. Space a little bit. Um, it asks for the coordinates. So we need to find the R values corresponding to these theta values. Just stick them back into this equation. So it'll be in terms of A. So you do have space for this over the page, which I haven't done. But, um, so R equals A at 1 plus cos theta. <laughs> For theta equals pi and minus pi, sorry, pi over 3 and minus pi over 3, you'll get the same thing. So cos theta is a half from here. So you stick this in, you get r is 3 over 2a. And for theta equals pi, you've got cos theta is minus 1. That's r equals 0. So your coordinates are 3 over 2, 3 over 2a, pi over 3. Over two a minus pi over three, and you've also got one at zero. Pi. Okay. Any questions on that first thing? So there was lots of space to do other things, but we can do this next one, um, it says find the equations and points of contact of the tangents to the curve, r equals a sine 2 theta. Uh, we're just doing theta between 0 and pi over 2, and it wants that are parallel to the initial line and perpendicular to the initial line. Um, so we could do a quick sketch of this if you wanted. The initial line is here, this is theta equals 0. Uh, you can sketch this in your calculator. We're doing this between 0 and pi over 2. It's one of these ones. So parallel to the initial line, we've definitely at least got one up here. Okay. And there's possibly one at the origin here. I think there probably will be at theta equals zero. When it starts off, I think there will be a, a horizontal tangent down there. Um, we've also got a vertical one definitely here, and I think also there's possibly one at pi over two. 
Chazal. So let's start off with parallel to the initial line. So parallel to the initial line, we know dy by dt to equal zero. We start off, as always, from y equals r sine theta. And we substitute in our equation for r, which is uh, a sine 2 theta sine theta, which doesn't combine together because they're different things inside the sign. You could use a double angle on sine. I don't want to do that yet because it's easy to differentiate as it is, I think. Um, so again, I'm going to put the a on the outside and then use the product rule on these two things. The differentiating sign goes to cos times by the 2. So I get 2 cos 2 theta sine theta. The differentiate the sign that goes to cos, so I get cos theta sine 2 theta. Yeah. And now that it's all in terms of theta, that was dy by d theta to differentiate it. Um, I'm setting this equal to zero and solving this. Um, I am going to need to use double angle formulae now. Um, so I don't have a choice for sine. So sine 2 theta, I have to turn into 2 sine theta cos theta. But remember, you do have a choice for cos. Um, I'm going to turn this into sine squared, so 1 minus 2 sine squared for this one, because over here, I've got a sine theta on its own. I'll have a cos times cos, which is cos squared, and I can turn that one into sine squared as well. So I'm going to use for this one the identity that cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And I should also have times by that sine theta there. It's equal to 0. You can do this in stages if you want, but I'm using double angle for me. Um, I'm going to expand out this bit here. So I've got 2 sine theta times 1 and minus 4 sine cubed theta from that. I've got cos theta times cos theta, which is cos squared theta, which I'm going to swap for 1 minus sine squared theta. Or 0. And again, expanding that out. sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. You've got to be really careful with this stuff because it's really easy to make mistakes. Let's collect up my sines and my sine cubed. So I've got 4 sine theta minus 6 sine cubed theta. 0. I could divide it all through by 2 if I wanted. And then I'm solving this, so I'm going to um, factorize that 2 sine theta. This is 2 minus 3 sine squared theta. And so I get solutions from, I get sine theta equals 0. And I also get 2 minus 3 sine squared theta. Zero. Not more space person. Following this, so I get sine squared theta <coughs> is 2 over 3 square root of that sine theta is plus or minus 2 over 3. And then I can get solutions from all of these. Remember, I'm only doing solutions between 0 and pi over 2. So sine theta equals 0 has one solution between 0 and pi over 2, which is 0. Um, sine theta equals um, root 2 over 3, so inverse sine of root 2 over 3, 0.95. in here that sine theta because minus root 2 over 3 has no solutions between 0 and 5 over 2. That's kind of what we were expecting. We we're expecting two values for theta. 
across, I said for the horizontal ones. I thought there's one up there, which will be your 0 0.955, and I thought there was one there at 3 equals 0. Okay, I've left more space than I have. <laughs> We'll do the same for the vertical ones, except this time it's dx by d theta equals zero. Everybody okay if I play this off? Okay. Right, so for the vertical ones, the b, I've got dx by d theta equals zero. Just like when we start off with y equals r cos theta, I'm going to start off with x equals, sorry, when we start off with y equals r sine theta, I'm going to start off with x equals r cos theta, and I'm going to substitute in my r, which is a sine 2 theta cos theta. Now that it's in terms of theta, I'm going to differentiate this. Uh, so differentiating sine 2 theta goes to 2 cos 2 theta times cos theta. Differentiating cos theta goes to minus sine and times by the sine 2 theta. I've got the A on the outside again. I'm setting this equal to zero and solving, so it's just the bracket that needs to be equal to zero. And again, we're going to use the double angle formula on this. So let's first find the coordinates. Do um, so a double angle formula for these. Again, I don't have a choice for sine. So two sine theta cos theta. This time I'm going to use the cos form of the double angle formula for cos because in here I'm going to get sine squared, which I can turn into cos. So I'm going to replace this with two, two cos squared theta minus one times by the other cos theta, and this is all equal to zero. Expand this out and turn it all into cos again, so I get 2 cos theta times 2 cos squared theta gives me 4 cos cubed theta, 2 times minus 1 times cos theta gives me minus 2 cos theta. Here I've got 2 sine squared theta, which I'm swapping for 1 minus cos squared, and if I expand this out, so minus 2 cos theta plus 2 cos cubed. And then I can collect up all of these like terms. So I get 6 cos cubed theta minus 4 cos theta equals 0. Factorize this. So factorize out 2 cos theta. I'll divide them by 2 and factorize out the cos theta. Gives me similar solutions to what I had for the um, parallel tangents. So I get cos theta equals zero, or I get that three cos squared theta minus two equals zero. Same thing again. So if I take the two over, divide by three square root, I get solutions cos theta equals plus or minus two. Um, cos theta equals zero it has one solution between zero and pi over two. It has a solution of pi over two, which again is what we um, thought. I didn't put it on, but I thought there was a vertical one here at pi over two. We'll also get another one from over there. And again, we're only going to get it from the positive version because if you think about the graph of cos between zero and pi over two, it's positive. So cos theta equals minus root 2 over 3 has no solutions between 0 and pi over 2. So if we just do inverse cos of positive root 2 over 3, not 0.615. Should have worked out r for the first ones and for these ones. So I'll work out r for these ones. Um, for this one, so remember r equals um, 
equal to a sine b. If you stick pi over 2 into this, you'll get sine of pi, which is 0. So I've got um, uh, perpendicular tangents. One of them is at 0 pi over 2. The other one, if I stick in 0.615, I put a sine of 2 times 0.615. Let's work that out. So sine of two ands, 0.943. So I've got one at 0 0.943. <coughs> 0 0.6. For the parallel tangents, I had one at theta equals zero and r equals zero. So there's one at the pole. And the other one was in the sine. So the other one was at 0 0.955. And if I do sine of 2 times that, so you're not going to There should be A on that, should 0.943A, not 0.9. That one should have an A on it as well. And it makes sense for them to have the same R value because they're kind of symmetrical, aren't they? So like this blue one is this distance, this green one is this distance. So the same distance away from the origin, they're just different. Any questions on either of those examples? There's a lot of work in well, how many marks would that be? I'd have to look. Not sure. Right, can I get you to have a quick look at example three, which is talking about the eggs and dimples on them? So if you remember back to the sketching lesson where I talked about cardioids and eggs and dimples and stuff, they're all very similar sorts of things. Cardioids look like this. Uh, eggs look like this. A bit kind of flatter here. And dimples look like this. Um, they all have a similar <laughs> sort of equation, p plus q cos theta, or sine theta if they were like rotated um, pi over 2. Um, but depending on the relationship between p and q, you'll get different ones. So if p and q are equal, you get a cardioid. Um, if um, p is bigger than or equal to 2q, uh, you get an egg, it's convex over here we say, and if it's p is less than 2q, you get a dimple. You don't need to learn those conditions. That is those conditions. So this question is asking us to prove these results. And the way we can prove these results is to do with our vertical tangents to these. So it doesn't mention cardioid, but I'll do it anyway. Um, so for a cardioid, it's got vertical tangents. That's not all do. It's got a vertical tangent over here, and it's got one here that touches in two places. So you'll get basically three coordinates for vertical tangents, okay, even though these two give you the same. For your egg, you'll have a tangent over here. And you'll also have a tangent on the left touching here. So you'll just get two coordinates for tangents here. Even though they've both got the same number of tangents, the number of coordinates you get, you get three for a cardioid, you get two for. For a dimple, you get a tangent over here. You get a tangent here, which my dimple's badly drawn, but um, these two are the same. This one and this one give you the same tangent. And you also get one 
for this thing here. So you'll get three tangents. It's not vertical, but it'll do. Three tangents this time, four points. So that's the difference between each of these. And that's where we're going to get these conditions. Okay. Um, so we're looking at vertical tangents. So we know that um, uh, dx by d theta is zero or vertical tangents, or tangents perpendicular to the initial line. Okay. So if we start out with x equals r cos theta, and we put in our form of our curve that we've got here, so p plus q cos theta, uh, we can differentiate this to dx by d theta. So I'm going to use the product rule on this. Differentiate in the first one, the p disappears, cos goes to minus sine, so minus q sine theta times cos theta. And then if I differentiate cos, I get minus sine times by this minus q cos theta. Um, let's expand this out and see what we get. So minus q sine theta cos theta minus p sine theta uh, minus Q sine theta cos theta, that's equal to zero. I've got two of these, so I can collect them up and I can factorize out sine theta as well. I'm going to make it all positive as well because it's all negative. To make it all positive, collect up the um, Q sine theta cos theta and factorize out sine theta, so I get 2Q cos theta plus P. So I've done a few steps up on say break them down. So we get solutions from sine theta equals zero and we also get solutions from here which is that cos theta is minus p over 2q. That's what the, that's the one that's going to give us the conditions on p and q. So you can see how p is related to 2q. Sine theta equals zero. We're looking at the entire thing here. So we're looking between um, We'll do pi to minus pi. Uh, so I get two solutions for this one. We won't include minus pi. Does that answer the question? Does that answer the question? But we'll do theta between minus pi and pi, not including minus pi. So we get two solutions here at zero and pi, which if you think about these diagrams, um, Makes sense for most of them. For the eggs and the dimples, they've got them. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Um, this is the one that, that will determine how many solutions that we've got. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at the cases when P is bigger than 2Q and P is less than 2Q and see how many solutions we get. Better, better so when p is bigger than 2q, okay, so I get p over 2q. If the top is bigger than the bottom, this is bigger than 1. Okay, so p over 2q is bigger than 1, or minus p over 2q is less than minus 1. This is there are no solution. There's no solutions, there's only these two tangents. And so this one corresponds to an egg. Okay? So there's no solutions, so there's uh, only two tangents at theta equals zero. So this one's an egg. That was a condition for an egg that P is bigger than two. If P is um, equal to 2Q, equal to 2Q, you get cos theta equals minus 1, which gives you theta equals pi, which is also already included there. So again, we only have two tangents. So 
so on the tangent or something like that. And again, this is an egg. So this is why the condition for egg is that P is bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, in both of those cases, we only get 2 tangents. Does that make more sense than what I was going to say? Yeah. Excellent. The other option we've got is if P is less than 2Q. So if P is less than 2Q, if P over 2Q is less than 1, and it's bigger than zero because p and q are positive, chosen to be positive constants earlier on. Uh, so you minus p over 2q is uh, bigger than minus one and less than zero, which has two solutions. Okay, so as long as it's between one and minus one, it's fine. But that one's between zero and minus one, so there are two solutions. So we've got these solutions at zero and pi. We've also got two more solutions. This is the, the dimple is the one that's got four points where the tangents are. So this one, this is a dimple. We're not going to cover a cardioid because A, it's not in the question, and B, cardioids are a bit complicated because actually quite often they have a negative loop in there, and actually you'd find a tangent at that one, but actually it'd have a negative value. We're not going to cover that. But that's from P. Okay.